fellow readers, Hannah here, and today we're going to do November new releases. So we did this last month and it seemed like people really enjoyed this. So I thought we'd do it again. I'm going to go through the new books coming out in November that I'm excited about and that I think you're excited about and we're going to talk about them for a little bit. First up is November 6th. An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good by Helen Turston and translated by Marlene Delargy. This is a mystery thriller in translation and it follows an 88-year-old Swedish woman. It's a short story collection following this character that I believe is in her other work. It sounds like a quirky, fun, sort of cozy mystery, and it might be a lot of fun. I haven't read Helen Turston before, but it definitely caught my eye. Next up, we have An Unexplained Death, The True Story of a Body at the Belvedere by Makita Brotman. This is true crime nonfiction. So this, follows Makita trying to figure out about a missing person which then became a suicide off of her own apartment building and examines what happened to this man and what what is going on at the hotel in general. Next we have Beyonce in Formation remixing black feminism by Omasiki Natasha Tinsley. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. This is a non-fiction book. It explores black women's sexuality and gender. It definitely sounds like an interesting feminist read. Then we have City of Ash and Red by Hui Young Foon with the translation by Sora Kim Russell. Uh, this is a, another mystery thriller but it seems to have sort of almost a fantasy element or a historical fiction but this follows a man who is a rat killer in in a city where he is sent out on a mission and swept up by the authorities and put under quarantine and while he is under quarantine he finds out that his ex-wife's body was found in his apartment and he is the prime suspect. This sounds like an interesting sort of backdrop for a mystery. The mystery itself sounds pretty standard but the background and the, the circumstances is definitely what makes this one sound super interesting. Then we have Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. This follows nine people who are at a health resort for various reasons and they're there for 10 days to, to rest, relax, get healthy, do all of the things that they need to do. But while while they are there, our main character, who is a best-selling novelist, starts to notice that some of the people don't seem like they need to be there, but more importantly, the head of the resort seems to be very strange and mysterious. I actually haven't read any Leanne Moriarty. I watched Big Little Lies and I own the novel, so I do want to read that at some point, but I'm picking this one up because I think that it might be really good, and I think it's about time I read something by her. Next is The Best Bad Things by Katrina Carrasco. This is a, another mystery thriller but it's historical in its setting and it takes place in 1887. We follow Alma Rosales who was trained by the Pinkerton Agency and now she smuggles and she joins up with an elusive smuggling ring and goes undercover as a man to find out where a lost shipment uh, went. So drugs and crime and history all ro rolled up into one. Finally, for November 6th, we have Ways to Hide in Winter by Sarah St. Vincent. This is the story of a woman who is hiding out at a remote campground lodge. She works flipping burgers and hides from some sort of past when a mysterious stranger enters the restaurant where she works and she becomes embroiled in his secrets and how they tie to her life and the things that she is running from. Just sounds like a good mystery or a good thriller. I don't know. Moving on to November 13th. This one is not a mystery, a thriller, or horror, but we have Becoming by Michelle Obama because 
because, I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are really excited about this one. I know I am. I want to read it when it comes out. I just think that Michelle Obama is really eloquent and has a lot of interesting ideas and I'm super interested to hear what she has to say, especially now. Then we have Bedfellow by Jeremy C. Schiff. This is a horror science fiction novel. There is a beast that has broken in and taken over the minds of the Lund family. They allow the beast to take over their lives, but it starts causing chaos and they have to fight against the creature in order to save themselves. This seems like a really interesting idea for a horror novel and I'm interested to see what Jeremy Ship has to say and how it's done because something taking over a family's minds could be done really campy or it could be really good. We also have Bingo Love Volume 1 the Jackpot Edition by Marguerite Bennett and T. Franklin. This is a graphic novel. It follows two women that met in 1963 in church bingo and fell in love, but because of the time and the circumstances of their lives, they were not able to be together. And then when they meet decades later, they're both, I believe, widows at the time. They decide to rekindle their romance. This just sounds super sweet and cute and I think it's a very sweet light read that would be nice during the month of November or at least you know anytime towards the end of the year. Then we have How She Died, How I Lived by Mary Crockett. This is a young adult novel following a girl who was contacted by a man who went on to kill the one person that responded to him and so she's dealing with survivor's guilt. It is now the eve of his sentencing for this murder and she is trying to get past her feelings and the situation itself and also budding feelings that she might be having for the victim's boyfriend. This could be done really well. I'm, I'm really interested to see survivor's guilt done in this way as well as I'm really curious to know the circumstances around the crime because it sounds random, like the boy was texting and whoever just happened to answer was the one that he killed, but I could be reading that wrong. I don't know. I'll have to read it and see. Then we have None of This is Normal, The Fiction of Jeff Vandermeer by Benjamin Robertson. So this is a book about Jeff Vandermeer's writing. So it focuses on the three major series that he has written. The Venice fictions, the Ambergris novels, and the Southern Reach trilogy. Honestly, I think this is interesting because Jeff Vandermeer's books are just so out there. I've only read Annihilation, but like the Southern Reach trilogy is so bizarre that I think this could be interesting to try to break down and understand what he is going for in his fiction because it is just weird. Then we're moving on to November 20th. So I see that A Cathedral of Myth and Bone by Cat Howard is set to release on that day. I already mentioned this in my October new releases, so I'm assuming that that book got pushed back. At least that's what I'm assuming based on this information. So I'll leave a link to that video, but it's a collection of short stories. It sounds good. Then one of the books that I am so excited about. I heard about this months ago and I have been barely able to contain my excitement for My Sister the Serial Killer by Onyinkin Braithwaite. I know I'm not saying that correctly. This is about two sisters, one of whom always helps her sister out of a tough jam when her boyfriend is killed. She helps her hide the body, but it's not the first time and she starts to wonder if her sister is a serial killer. And then they both have an interest in the same guy and she starts to worry about whether or not her sister is going to 
kill this man too. This sounds, it sounds so good. I am just so here for it. I want to read this so bad and you can bet on November 20th I'm going to be picking this one up. Finally we have November 27th and the first book that I'm excited about then is How Long Till Black History Month Stories by N.K. Jemisin. This is a collection of short fiction from the three time Hugo Award winning N.K. Jemisin. I shouldn't have to say anything else because that just sounds amazing. We also have a new Louise Penny, Kingdom of the Blind, coming out that day. And finally, what we talk about when we talk about rape by Sohalia Abdulali. This is a nonfiction memoir. Sohalia was gang raped when she was 17 in Mumbai, and this caused her to want to talk about and investigate and explore the ideas of rape and culture and how that affects women in different societies. In this book, she interviews other survivors and is exploring the ideas of how we move forward as a culture and what our assumptions do and how we deal with rape and rape culture. It's not a very bright note to end on, but I do think it's an important one, especially in this day and age. I think that talking about rape and rape culture is something that we need to do. So that is it for me. I will see you next time. And until then, stay twisty. Thank you.